Good morning, I'm Justin Mormuth. The race for Orange County Mayor is beginning to heat up. Candidates are out on the campaign trail, meeting voters and raising money. Last week, Sheriff Jerry Demings and Commissioner Pete Clark joined me to talk about their plans for the county. If you missed it, you can find both interviews on clickorlando.com slash weekly. This morning, though, you'll meet the third candidate, political newcomer and businessman, Rob Panapinto. What does Mayor Panapinto sound like? Sounds pretty good. I mean, yeah. it's what we've it's what we've gotten into this race to mm -hmm. be able to do. Not because it's important for me to be mayor, but mm -hmm. to I think do the things that we would like to do for the community around creating more higher wage jobs, addressing affordable housing, mm -hmm. transportation, really, really strategically addressing from my perspective some of these challenges that we have just been talking about for a long time but not doing anything about. So, so in that context, it would feel it would feel good, Justin. I imagine it would. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background. Sure. Yeah. So I've lived here for almost uh, almost 25 years now. Uh, my wife, I've been married for 27. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had both of our daughters since we moved to uh, since we moved to Central Florida. They're teenagers. Allie's 16 and 14. I I spent most of my my time uh, in a business that was fortunate enough. I was part of a group that uh, took a small manufacturing company out in Winter Garden to a, a healthcare technology company, mm -hmm. which was an interesting entrepreneurial entrepreneurial story. And, and locally here, we grew it to uh, about 1,200, 1,500 jobs. Um, and uh, we sold it to, uh, to an organization and, and about in 2011. And uh, two years after that, I left and have really devoted myself to giving back to the community in different ways. Uh, professionally for me, as you know from the last time I was here mm -hmm. talking about the Social Enterprise Accelerator, uh, I've, I've been investing and supporting and helping really grow our uh, tech startup and social enterprise startup community, which I think is an important part of our need to diversify the economy. But then I've been involved in a, in a, host, of, a host of projects around economic, economic development, uh, housing, mm -hmm. homelessness, transportation, um, a lot of the other social safety issues we have, in, social challenges we have in, in the community, which have really put me uh, uh, very close to how government operates, particularly at the local, at the local level, and certainly giving me an interesting lens on mm -hmm. tackling some of, these, some of these problems. Now, you are not a politician <laughs> yet. But the two people you're running against are yeah. both elected officials. Yep. Does that hurt or help you? Well, listen, at the end of the day, I think that the voters will decide that question. From yeah. my perspective, part of the reason that I got into the race is that, you know, again, I've been, I was sitting in these meetings and being part of these projects, mm -hmm. and we would talk about these issues and talk about these issues and talk about these issues, mm -hmm. but really did not see them being addressed in a, in a very strategic, systemic way. Mm. And, and I do think part of that is because these are long-term, difficult problems to solve, and I think need some innovative and new ways to think about them. And so I do think you've got to understand certainly how government works, mm -hmm. but also how the private sector works and how the nonprofit sector works, because I think we're going to need all three of them to solve these issues effectively. And so, so in that context, while I, I have, gosh, wonderful respect for both of the two gentlemen that mm -hmm. I'm running against and their commitments to this community, because they have spent their entire lives in government, when they are approached with a situation, they are going to look at it through a certain lens. Mm -hmm. We all have our different experience. So from my perspective, I, I think we need to have a broader lens and solutions that are broader than that. So, so from that perspective, I would view it as a, a, certainly an advantage to allow us to innovate and think mm -hmm. differently. Ultimately, that's what elect the election will be about. In your opinion, what is the current state of Orange County? How do we look? It is, it is interesting because, look, there is so much that we should proudly be positive mm -hmm. about. And what an amazing community. I mean, I've raised my family. I love this community. And unemployment is low. Anyone mm -hmm. who wants a job here, for the most part, can find a job. Mm -hmm. We can argue about the quality of those jobs, but the quantity is good. We continue, we continue to, to grow, and people from all over the world want to come and not just visit here, but live here. Mm -hmm. We're the number one tourist destination in the world. Downtown has been dramatically transformed. There's a lot of money going into infrastructure and transportation. Mm -hmm. We're a young community. We're a creative community. We're a diverse and, I think, very accepting, accepting mm -hmm. community. So all that's wonderful. But we are also the same community that in almost every measure is ranked uh, at the lowest in terms of major metropolitan areas in terms of our average average wage, which I, think, which I think drives a lot of our other challenges in the community. A third of our renters pay half of their income in rent. 
which is not sustainable because the benchmark is, is supposed to be 30, 30%, right. right? We continue to have uh, homeless issues. From a transportation perspective, we haven't quite figured out how mass transportation works here, and this is a difficult community to get, to get around in. 26% of our kids live in poverty. Mm -hmm. And as, even though we have a young community and we talk about how millennials love it, Lending Tree just ranked us 88th out of 100 communities in terms of where a millennial wants to buy a home, mm -hmm. which I think says something about whether they're going to put roots here. And, and so I think we're in this two sides of a coin situation right mm -hmm. now. And look, I'll personalize this down to my own, my own family. My daughter, Allie, uh, is 16. She's looking at colleges. And so we talk all the time about mm -hmm. what she wants to do with her life. And I'm not so sure that she will automatically come back here. And I hear that all across this community from moms and, and mm. families as we're talking to people and knocking on doors. I hear it from entrepreneurs and small business owners who are struggling to grow their business here and raise capital. I hear it from the families who are moving here from, from Puerto Rico about, is this a place they can really build a better life? So the positives are easy to see. I think we need to look at that strength and leverage that strength to broaden the opportunities for people in, the, in this community. Otherwise, I, I worry about our long-term sustainability. How do we create those higher paying jobs? What, what is your idea to improve that? Yeah, and I, I think it's several ideas. There's mm -hmm. no one magic bullet here. One, I do think it starts with the public sector, mm -hmm. and in this case, the mayor standing up and saying, this is absolutely a priority. Mm -hmm. The bully pulpit means something, and private dollars do follow public support. And I think we've seen that to some extent with the governor, right? Mm -hmm. He's walked around the state for eight years talking about jobs, 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 jobs. And there's no doubt that that has had an effect. So I think that's the first point. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, we need to continue to look at uh, recruiting companies and bringing companies in here, particularly in manufacturing, healthcare, and technology. I think there's wonderful opportunities in the western part of the county from sort of that Apopka to Winter Garden mm -hmm. uh, Beltway there with the 429 opening to, to do some great economic development out there. But we also need to invest in our small businesses and our entrepreneurs here. We are one of the lowest communities in terms of attracting venture capital. So as much as I want to attract companies, I want to attract dollars. It sounds like fundraising is going well for you. What does that tell you? Do you get a sense of something that that you're making a little bit of noise, even though you have never run an election campaign before. Yeah. First, let me say I, I get you know I get asked this a lot. Yeah. So, and I obviously I don't think that fundraising at the end of the day is is the sole measure of a candidate right, right. in any way, shape, or form, right? Mm -hmm. But what it does show me, and what does inspire me, is that it's not the it's not necessarily the amount of money raised. It's it's how we've raised it and who we've raised it from. Because mm -hmm. as an outsider coming in. You know, the political class is going to sit back a little bit and look at someone like me, even though they knew me from some of the other things mm -hmm. that I've been, I've been involved in. So the fact that we have been able to attract so many people from all across this county who have not given to political campaigns before, um, who have not been involved in the political process, and who are really looking, however, to make a positive change in this community. And some of these are large businesses. Many are small businesses and entrepreneurs. Many are young professionals who are building their careers and I think want to make this their home and want to make sure that in 20 or 30 years, this is the place that still is their home. So that's the aspect of the fundraising that, that mm -hmm. inspires me and excites me because it tells me that our message of of addressing these issues in a different way, looking at them more broadly and more innovatively, is resonating, is resonating with people. And my thanks to Rob for coming in. Again, you can see my interview with the two other candidates right now on clickorlando.com weekly.